Temtem is a new Monster Collection MMO developed by Akrima. I've had my eye on Temtem since pretty much through the Kickstarter in 2018 and I've played through the stress test and I've played about 30 plus hours of the early access release so far. Is it worth a buy in its current state? Let's find out. The game loop and structure of Krima's Temtem is not new to the Monster Collection subgenre of RPGs, but Krima puts their own style and flair into a lot of the mechanics that, that these games have relied on, and it makes these similar systems feel fresh and unique, and it's a good spin and evolution of something that we've seen before. During combat, for example, you are always battling with two Temtem right from the very start. You will occasionally fight a single Temtem in trainer battles or wild battles, but you as the trainer will always throw two Tem cards out to start the fight. This leads to to some unique synergies with moves called techniques in this game. Some techniques will gain additional damage, have a higher attack priority, or even gain additional status effects if the Temtem is partnered with another Temtem of a certain type, for example. This is that synergy that it shows in the game because you will always have two Temtem out. You can add these additional mechanics and unique features to systems we've seen before, and it really allows you to stand out and show more of a flair in combat, as well as have more strategy because you might have a Temtem that is a fire type and it has a move that balances well with a water type so you might always have a fire and a water type out which allows you to have more flexibility in combat as well because you can have a fire attacks and water attacks at the same time you can also experiment with your move set more freely when you have these temtem because in temtem when you learn new techniques you can freely swap them in and out with previously learned techniques anytime outside of combat in the squad menu i have a separate temtem tips video which covers more of the combat differences which i'll link here because i don't want to rehash what i've talked about before but overall the combat is engaging and there is plenty of depth to the strategic play here and I do enjoy it. Temtem isn't strictly an action-packed game and it has become my casual game to relax to often over the past few couple of weeks. I have been playing Temtem using the Steam Link on my mobile around the house and while I don't always like sitting at my computer, this has been a great feature to play on my phone, on the couch, laying in bed and it really develops this experience and I can't wait for this game to come to the Switch and I really think that this game is going to thrive on a system like that. While playing on the computer is a good way to play the game as well, there are more mouse shortcuts than I was expecting so you can do things with the UI just with the mouse that you can't do with a controller. For example, you don't have to access your squad menu when you're playing the game with a mouse and keyboard to change out your Temtem. You can click on the corner of the screen and drag your Temtem to the order that you would like to play in. Outside of combat, the world of Temtem is known as the Archipelago, and the world itself is an extremely beautiful and vibrant world full of colour. I wasn't initially that impressed with the variations in the landscapes until I reached around the end of the second island and especially throughout the third. Initially, though, the landscape looked good, and there is nothing unique in its structure early on. As you progress through the islands, the environments expand from your usual hillsides to crystal-covered plains, poisonous swamps, crystal mines, there's a volcano that that sort of thing. Temtem is grounded in its own reality and the unique typing like crystal and mental and toxic and things like that. This is really displayed in the landscapes around you rather than just being walking through green grass and finding oh a toxic type or something. The world itself shows the environments that these Temtem would live in and it expands the world building that's presented in front of you. In its current early access state, three of the planned six islands are available for exploration and Temtem catching along with the first half of the main story. I'm going to briefly touch on the story here. I'm not going to go into anything specific, but if you'd like to go in completely blind, skip ahead to the timestamp on the screen right now. The main story is mostly a tool to drive you between the islands with some unique experiences along the way that separate Creamer's Monster Collector from other stories that we've seen in the past in this genre. After creating your character, you and your rival Max, who you will seldom see again after this initial time, embark on your journey from your hometown of Zeta after choosing your initial starter from Crystal, Smazy, and Hoochick. The Professor will also give you a Tawai and you will be sent on your journey looking for the dojo challenges. While it's not always smooth sailing, you will eventually run into into Clan Balsoto, Soto, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, you know me, I'm terrible with words, who conveniently seems to be in the way of you fighting the dojos at every turn. 
Now there is one point in the main story that I wasn't particularly a fan of. Now without going into specifics, I don't really want to spoil anything, but you will lose your squad Temtem, the six that you are carrying for a period of time and all of your carried items. After this point, you are given four Temtem to continue your journey and some Tem cards for a period of time to go out and survive and take on that next dungeon area. While initially I thought this was a unique challenge to mix up the game's primary loop, it was far too long because I really wanted access to my Temtem and to my bag. I was frustrated how often I had to go back to a certain individual to heal and then continue when I'd spent X amount of hours leveling up my Temtem and grinding out levels and breeding Temtem just to have that stripped away from me for this really difficult dungeon section. You do get them back however, it's not all bad, I just felt this section dragged on too long and it was a minor fault in an otherwise well designed dungeon section which you can come back to after this point with your original Temtem and explore and catch Temtem as you please. If you're interested in the story I would say it's acceptable for what it is and mostly held together by a great and occasionally comical writing and a few interesting twists along the way that I obviously won't spoil for you. Temtem is also home to a large number of side quests that you can engage with throughout your journey. Each town and even in some of the routes and hidden in the world, there are various side quests ranging from show me this certain Temtem, go and collect this item for me and some more interesting story based quests like there was a group of kids who were looking for various jobs and you had to go out in the world and find them some valid work. The routes that you and the Temtem travel on during your adventure are very diverse, each with their own unique feature. One being a mountain to climb or a volcano to explore or a winding maze of smaller islands connected by bridges or crystal covered areas. There's more I could go on. Each route feels unique and is enjoyable to explore. You are regularly rewarded by exploring the little alleyways and little paths off the main route with different items that will definitely help you along your journey. And the only downside is that there's only currently 86 creatures currently in the game to encounter, battle, and capture with your Tem cards. Leaving some areas where you think you should have new Tem Tem to encounter, you will encounter Tem Tem that you have seen before. This is another feature that will expand as the game develops with over 75 more Temtem planned and three more islands in development. As you explore the existing regions with your trusty squad, your Temtem will evolve and they will evolve during combat which is a fantastic feature and I really like this feature that your Temtem grows a level and then evolves mid combat. It's just very exciting to see and it's not something that you see typically in these monster collection games. The evolution process is such a satisfying feature in these kind of games. It's what your primary sense of progression comes from and for me it's the key factor to keep me pushing forward and playing more of the game and it just really adds to that development when you know you don't know when it's going to happen because the levels aren't static when they evolve in Temtem so so your mid fight maybe you're fighting a dojo or something and then your Temtem grows a level and it immediately involves in combat and you're ready to keep fighting it's just very exciting and engaging to know that this could happen at any moment. Temtem also has a very developed and thoroughly thought out breeding process which is more complicated than it's worth in some regards. Typically in these kind of games I'm not a breeder, I don't enjoy grinding and trying to get the best creature out there and surprisingly though even though it's more complex than some other games I actually engaged with the breeding for multiple hours trying to catch fire temtem with perfect SVs and breed them to get the combination of maximum SVs. SVs are your temtem's genetic stats, each one has a unique set standard of SVs they can't be changed later. They can slightly, you can up them by one and it lowers their volatility, but you know that you, you can't drastically change them. They are their genetic stats. And SVs are directly represented on your squad screen, which is also a good feature in this game. And I really feel like that's why I'm driven to breed and get Temtem with high SVs or maximum SVs, because I can see that stat immediately from when I've caught the Temtem. I can see if its stats are bad or just okay or really good. You know, if I know that I want to use this Temtem, I catch it and I go, ah, oh, you know, the stats aren't very good. I'll try and catch more. And I actually spent a lot of time engaging with the wild areas, grinding out fire and water Temtem and then going and breeding them. And, you know, while I'm, I'm not perfect, I only spent maybe two to three hours on this whole process. I maxed a couple of SVs on my Raybar. I could have spent longer trying to breed the best Temtem possible, but I wanted to get back into the enjoyable part of the game for me, which is the battling and exploring. 
Temtem also supports multiplayer and co-op play so you and a friend can group up and complete the story and explore the world together. As all battles are 2v2, each of you will have one Temtem active at a time. And while some of the multiplayer features are still in development, such as an in-game chat, tournament play and clans, and there's gonna be clan warring with dojo wars, you can currently battle and trade with existing players in the world. Let's pause for a moment and talk about the sound of Temtem. Firstly, the music in Temtem is a definitive standout. From the catchy battle tunes to the different soundtracks you hear while exploring the routes, it's fortunate that the music is so strong here as it holds up the rest of the sound profile of the game almost on its own. There is no voice acting in Temtem other than the occasional grunt and noise that you hear when story characters are conversing with you. This feature can be turned off in the settings, which I did as I don't like those uh, and uh sounds, you know, when, when people are talking. The general sound effects of the characters and the Temtem is adequate, but it occasionally gets a little bit annoying. The Temtem cries are not great of an audio sample. When you're grinding wild encounters and you're hearing the same cry sounds every couple of minutes, it just gets a little bit tedious. While it's not enjoyment shattering, it's just worth mentioning. Graphically, there are a few options for Temtem, including 21 by 9 aspect ratio. And if you're an ultra wide supporter like myself, you will thoroughly enjoy this and it is a good experience. It's proper ultra wide. I ran Temtem on my Ryzen 2600 and RTX 2080 without any noticeable performance issues. I would expect that most machines would be able to run Temtem in some form as it's not graphically demanding, as you can see from the minimum and recommended requirements for the game on the Steam profile. Well, there are limited graphical options, the art style and colors are really what makes Temtem stand out and look great in its own way. It's not really about pushing the envelope of the graphics here, it's it's more about the art style and the colors and the shading is, is really what's important here. There is a lot to love in Temtem, but there are some things that are a bit negative that are also worth mentioning. Temtem can at times be a very difficult game. While I find this to be a refreshing change and enjoy the challenge, some people might find returning to the Temporium to heal after just one trainer battle tedious and boring. Because of this, it's also worth mentioning that you may have to spend some time grinding experience as experience gains in Temtem is very slow. You don't level very quickly. There is an experience share that you can share your experience with a single Temtem that can be found after beating the first gym or dojo if that's something you're interested in, but you won't actually find it just by following the story. You do have to specifically go out and seek this item and it does require some backtracking. It's not going to show you where this is. You do have to find it yourself. It is also worth mentioning that the, currently there is a hard cap of level 48. So if you're worried about either being left behind or being over leveled by the new content as it is yet to be released, it shouldn't be a concern as the level cap will be increased as the additional islands are added to the game. As I mentioned, there are three full planned islands and one end game smaller island, which will become available in the future. Krima, the developers have released a roadmap both for the short term and the medium term leading through 2021 and the planned launch window and console ports as well. I have two videos breaking this down, both from the full short-term and the mid-term roadmaps. I'll put a card to either of those videos here. As the game is still very much in development, there are changes that may occur to the core gameplay that may affect your experience and you may not agree with the decision that's made. Examples of this is since the early access launch, Krima have reduced the likelihood of finding Loomers, which are shiny Temtems that will always have three perfect SVs from 6,000 in one to a chance of 8,000 in one. They have also reduced the sell price of a number of the items, making it more difficult to earn money to buy items such as healing items and Tem cards throughout your general experience. There are ways to grind out Pansoon, which is the name of the currency, but it can be a little tedious as it's based around catching Temtem, then releasing them, and then going to a certain vendor to get pantsuits for your released Temtem. They have also released a 
grinding experience called the Sci Park, which is a hot topic in the community at the moment. And essentially what it is, is it's Temtem's version of a Safari Park with a weekly reset of which Temtem you can find in this area. And it has a expensive entry price and you have to use specific Tem cards, which you also have to buy in this park to be able to catch the higher quality Temtem, which have an increased rate of Lumas being found here, as well as higher SV Temtems. The cost of entry in this park and the fact that you have to buy cards on top of the cost to enter the park is what has really been a hot topic amongst the community. While these changes may not affect your experience as they have very little impact on my own, I have never seen a Luma Temtem regardless and I still find the game enjoyable even with these changes that I played before they occurred and after. I've spent over 30 hours in Temtem and there is still more to do. There is more content coming to the game in the next few months and beyond and there is definitely a lot to love and enjoy here. Temtem in my eyes is definitely a buy in its current state and with the promise of the new content coming from Creamer, Temtem has a bright future ahead. Temtem to me doesn't feel like a new generation of Monster Collector. It is a successor building on systems and mechanics that have been well established and pushing what this style of RPG can actually be. I've avoided saying the dreaded P word throughout this review and you can probably imagine why, but Temtem is what I was hoping for in the new generation of Pokemon. I said it, alright? I said it. If you have any specific questions about Temtem, please ask away in the comments down below. I'll happily get back to you. If you want to have more of a conversation about it, please check me out at twitch.tv slash Norza. I'd be happy to chat to you live and discuss this great game that I thoroughly enjoyed. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday nights, plus some other times here and there. That's all for me today. My name is Norza. Thank you for watching and have a great day.